I'm Kia Malone here at Capital Dance Board 2016, just uh, finishing up a Congress with the incomparable Rufus Dustin, Dustin, Mr. RD, <laughs> all of that. Uh, giving your. You just can't tell, but I'm blushing. You're turning burgundy. I am. That's turning what we burgundy. do. Burgundy. That's exactly. That's what we do. <laughs> Let's talk about what you discussed in your Congress yes. with the uh, professionals and their students, Bolero, and that's the great thing about Capital Dance Sport because you have a chance, competitors and their professionals, to step away from the floor, right. to step away from the glitz and the glamour, yeah. and just to come in here and get some really good knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I agree. I I wish we could do this at every event. Um, I also wish, in a way, that it could be done not during a competitive event. Like, if they could close down the entire morning of an event, which, of course, is not possible um, because we have entries and we have to get through the process of the time schedule. But it would be lovely to close out, you know, that 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock and only do what I like to call dance camp um, so that the professionals who are also need to be there could also hear the information because very often we're only getting students in um, who are not competing at the moment and their teachers are still out on the floor with another student mm -hmm. so it would be but you know what if four voices hear the information and they attach four more voices to the information and they then attach four more, then it's better than nothing at all. Yeah, because our minds are thinking, okay, yes, I can attend the dance congress or the dance camp, but then I've got to get back on the floor right. in 20 minutes or 30 right. minutes or an hour. Today you discuss Bolero, yeah. and Bolero for me is so confusing because there are so many different ways to do it. Correct. How do you judge all the different ways and, and what's right and what's wrong? I mean, how do you put that all together? Well, I think we, we, we have identified that this dance has a legato, uh, um, strung out musical phrasing. And so um, we have to be careful that the, the forms of rumba, because we do three forms of rumba in ballroom dancing, guaracha rumba, son rumba, and bolero rumba. But bolero rumba is no longer called bolero rumba. It's now just called bolero. In my day, as I said in my Congress, when the dinosaurs were walking here at the, I was walking my Tyrannosaurus Rex at school, we had at that time very specifically not specified what the bolero was because we just did it traditionally to very slow, very slow son uh, music from Cuba. Tito Puente and Eddie Rodriguez. And, but nowadays we dance it almost to Beyonce if we want to. And so, because ballads, any kind of vocal ballad is wonderful, um, from Barbra Streisand to uh, Celine Dion. So with that, the bolero has now become a dance that doesn't equalize itself or compare itself to a Latin dance as much as it's a composite of three dances, waltz, tango, and a little bit of rumba. So I think that that's how we sort it out. Can someone show us the other two composite dances other than rumba? Can you show me this is a little bit of tango and a little bit of waltz? You combine that, it's a separate entity all unto itself that isn't like any of the other dances in Latin American. Wow, and you see all of that knowledge here at Capital Dance Sport with Mr. Rufus Dunstan doing the dance camp because that's what you get here. The quality, the, the beautiful floor, the beautiful knowledge, the Absolutely. quality of everything you bring. Absolutely. Thank you very much.